Good morning guys, happy Saturday morning and I have my coffee with my favorite little Chihuahua mug. I'm going to show you guys like this little Chihuahua mug like every Saturday morning this whole year. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to torture you guys, but it is such a cute mug. I just love it. Anyway, so happy Saturday morning and today I've just got some errands to run, just a little bit of running around. So I'm just going to do a quick, simple little get ready with me, just a real easy look. But today I'm going to focus on more of my higher, my higher end brand products. Um, it's been a minute since I've done a get ready with me with all high end brands. I've done a lot of get ready with me's with drugstore or a combination of drugstore and high end brands. But I'm going to use all of um, high end products today. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot going on today. Just a couple of errands. So I'm not going to do a fully glammed makeup look. Simple, easy, Saturday morning, getting errands done kind of makeup look. So if the lighting is a little bit off, I'm, I, I have a new ring light that I'm playing with and I'm trying to still adjust my lighting situation here. I've got my ring light, I'm in front of natural light in front of my window. I tried to get some uh, backlight going back there. You guys can actually kind of see like, oh, other side, over there. You guys can kind of actually see like the little leg of a light down there. <laughs> I tried to move it out of the picture as much as I could, but it doesn't light up enough on the back wall if I scoot it back any further, so I wasn't really able to do that. But anyways, enough of me rambling. Let's get ready with uh, my higher end products for Saturday morning. All right, now starting with my under eyes actually today. I've been having an issue with really dry under eyes lately. And you know, I use my Clinique Custom Repair Under Eye Treatment Serum, and I really do like that serum, but here just lately, it has not been giving me quite enough moisture under the eyes. So today, one of my tasks is, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna look for another under eye cream that's going to give me a little bit more moisture. So I need to figure out, do I need to still use the serum and then use a cream on top? Or can I just switch to this under eye cream, whatever I find, and uh, just go with it? I don't know yet. Anyway, so that's going to be one of my tasks today is like on the hunt for that. So because my eyes are so parched feeling right now. I'm going to add a little bit of extra moisture under my eyes with the Clinique All About Eyes right here. It says it reduces circles and puffs. So we'll see because I am suffering with a little bit of circlage going on under there. Um, you'll see I've got some dark darkness under my eyes. It's not exactly like dark circle. It's more like shadow. Um, it's really hard to try to really cover shadow because my eyes are sunken in just a little bit and I'm starting to get a little bit of baggage there. So it's hard to cover that shadow. Anyway, I'm going to use the All About Eyes just a little bit here. I'm going to put it ring fingers and I'm just going to take it right under the eyes. And once I get it in under the eyes, I do have this tool I'm going to use here really quick. It is This little tool is drugstore, but it's from Real Techniques. It's a little... Um, cooling ball here and I'm just going to run it under the eyes and just kind of get that um, under eye moisturizer here blended in with this and hopefully at the same time because this little ball is so cooling that it's going to maybe help uh, depuff some of the baggage I got going on under there. That's my hope anyway. Now, because it is a very light day, and like I said, I've just got, you know, some errands to run, and while I'm out looking for an eye cream, I might actually go test out um, a new foundation that I've been really wanting to try. So, in order to get color matched, I don't want to use something that's going to really, I don't want to put a foundation on that's really going to, um, I want to say, mess with my tone, mess with my skin tone too much. So, I've actually opted for a BB cream today, and I'm going with the Too Faced Tinted Beauty Balm, this guy right here. It is a light coverage, so it's not going to cover all my hyperpigmentation or any of that. I'm going to leave that visible because if I am going to shade match for a foundation today, I need to make sure that that hyperpigmentation actually still um, kind of shows through so I can make sure that I get the correct match that I need for my skin tone while also helping cover a little bit of this, you know, hyperpigmentation situation going on. I feel like I have a cat hair on my eyelash. 
I think I got it. All right, so again, the Too Faced Tinted Beauty Balm. Right here it says it's a multi-benefit skin care makeup. It does have a broad spectrum SPF of 20, and it is in the shade Nude Glow. So <clears throat> I am moisturized. I'm not wearing a primer because, like I said, this is a beauty, beauty balm. I shouldn't need a primer for it, right? Okay, so that's what it looks like. I have worn this, like, for years, and I love it. It is like one of my all-time favorite, I'm going to call it tinted moisturizers <laughs> because I mean, essentially that's what a beauty balm is. It's a tinted moisturizer. This one does have just a little bit more coverage than your standard tinted moisturizer does, which I think is one of the reasons why I like it, but not quite as much coverage as like a CC cream. So it is a very sheer coverage. I'm going to use my Urban Decay Optical Blurring Brush for this. And just buff that right onto the skin. Buff it in. It's one of the things I do really like about this product is when you buff it into the skin, it really buffs in. I mean, it gives you a little bit of color correcting. Very sheer. Buffs right in and keeps your skin looking very, very natural, which is one of the things that I really do love about this product on just a everyday like no big fuss makeup day, you know what I mean? Um, I just recently started using heat on my hair again and because I'm having very unruly bang issues, I tried um, straightening my bangs and burnt my forehead right there. It's really sore and it's very hard to cover. So I'm not too worried about, I guess, covering it too much today. I might do a little bit of coverage, but not much. All the products that I'm using today, I mean, I'll list down below just in case you guys forget. It'll be down there listed somewhere in that description. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and prime my lids. And I'm using my Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is the older formula. I'm trying to use it up. Not formula. The older packaging. I'm trying to use it up. I know the newer packaging has got the... Um, the doe foot now that you can actually pull out and use. This one is still the queasy tube, squeezy tube. Um, and actually, you know, I do like the doe foot, but honestly, I really like the squeezy tube better because I feel like I can get more of the product out using the squeezy tube. So this is, like I said, the older packaging. I'm trying to get it used up. So that's what I'm using today for shadow primer. All right, so while I'm letting the primer set on my eyes, I'm going to go in with a little bit of concealer. And today I'm going to use the um, Bobbi Brown Corrector Concentrate in Peach Bisque, this guy right here. And because I'm going to try to mask shadows and not so much cover dark circles, I'm going to strategically try to place this right underneath um, the bag, right where the shadow is, and hopefully that will... Um, help mask that. I'm not going to place it completely under the under eye because then it's just going to make the bag stand out a little bit. This does uh, do a little bit of brightening plus it also has that salmon-y, peachy color. Um, so to strategically place it, let me find my brush to do that. Alright, so to strategically place this product, I'm going to use, this is from Bogacious. This is just the concealer brush here. It's just like a flat little paddle brush. Um, I actually got this in a boxy charm last year sometime, and it's great if you want to st st strategically place concealer. Typically what I would do is I would put run my finger in there to warm up the product and just kind of place it all up under the eye and blend it, but I'm just going to do the shadows here, so I'm just going to dig into the product a little bit and just place it right there, directly in the shadow not using much and you know one of the nice things though really about this Bobbi Brown corrector concentrate here I think that's what it's called it's just called corrector sorry anyway so let me back up and rephrase one of the nice things about this Bobbi Brown corrector is I don't need a concealer on top because this actually corrects brightens and conceals at the same time and it doesn't really accentuate any of the texture I have under my eyes. 
Um, it's not quite as emollient as, say, my Benefit Erase Paste. I know they have changed the name of Benefit Erase Paste. It's now called, like, Boing Concealer or something like that. But I have not gotten the, uh, I haven't used up my original Erase Paste just yet, so I haven't gotten the new one. But my understanding is it is the same thing, just renamed and repackaged. Do you guys hear the 12 o'clock whistle going? Okay, so once I have the concealer blended in with my brush, one of the things I like to do is I like to go in with one of my blending sponges, and I'm using the Real Techniques Diamond Sponge, which has quickly become one of my favorite sponges because it is just so easy to use, and it's so, so soft. So I have my damp sponge here, and I'm just going to take this little corner tip. See how pointed that is? And I'm just going to go lightly over the concealer edges to just make sure that it is blended into my skin and that it does not look like I have a concealer line under there. Okay, so do you guys see how it like just blends right in flawlessly? And I don't need another concealer on top of this Bobbi Brown. It, um, it does it all. It corrects, it um, brightens, and it conceals in just one little pot, just like the Erase Paste does. Boing, whatever it's called nowadays. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and set this with the powder. The powder I'm using today is the um, Clinique Loose Setting Powder, and this is actually one of my favorite powders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little sponge, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the powder here on just the corner of my sponge, and I'm just going to place it right here under the eye. Now, I don't bake. When you are my age, it's probably not a good idea to bake because I feel... Baking actually accentuates texture and lines under the eyes, so I do not bake at all. I place a little bit of powder there and then take my sponge and press it into the skin. No baking. And my under eye is now set. Moving on to brows. My brows are just a little bit unruly. I need to get them taken care of. Um, I haven't tweezed in a while, so I've got like little brow hairs like happening all under here. But I'm going to go ahead and do the best I can with my brows today. And I'm using my Origins Fill in the Blanks pencil. And I love this. It is this skinny little pencil with a spoolie on the end. The only thing that makes me crazy with this pencil is the lid on the spoolie side doesn't click closed. So it just kind of just like... There's no resistance there. It just kind of falls right off. That's the only part I don't like about it. The um, pencil side does clip closed. So I guess that's the important side, right? So it is a very, very small tipped little um, pencil there. Um, I have actually switched to using the NYX Micro Brow more so than this one. This one used to be my all-time favorite. And then I started using the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which I did really love the Anastasia Brow Wiz, don't get me wrong. But the couple of Brow Wizzes that I had purchased, it actually, the spoolie broke off. I mean, both of them. The spoolie broke off. Have you guys gotten any of the Brow Wizzes where that has happened to you? Am I too rough on my spoolies? Anyways, but I have actually been using a lot of the NYX Micro Brow because... I feel, on, in all honesty, it does a little bit of a better job than this one. This one used to be my all-time, end-all, be-all favorite brow pencil. And then after I started using the Anastasia and the NYX one, I realized that this brow pencil is a little soft. Do you guys hear some moaning in the background there? My little... Uh, Chihuahua is rolling around on the floor behind me, and he's going, making little groany noises, and it's really, really cute when he does that. Anyway, so like I was saying, this one, I've noticed since I've been using the other pencils, is a little bit soft. Ooh, I'm shaking my whole table. Um, so I have to be really light-handed with it. Now, if you have a really full, full brow, which my brow is not... Uh, skinny by any means, but if you have a really full, full brow, this is absolutely wonderful as just like a fill-in pencil. I guess that's why it's called fill-in-the-blanks. 
Hmm. Never thought about that before. And then one of the other things that I love to do is I use my Benefit Highbrow, this guy here, which is just a very brightening pencil, and I just put it right on the tail from like the highest arch of my brow on the tail, or from the highest arch of my brow down the back end of my brow through the tail here. And then I just kind of blend it in, and I feel what that does is that um, gives it just a little bit of a lift up there. I try very, very hard not to get it down onto that upper lid right there because then it makes that stand out. And I've already got a little bit of a hood going because of my age, uh, so I don't want to make that stand out at all. So I try to keep it as close to the brow as I possibly can so it doesn't make that whole lid area stand out. Okay. And you guys notice how it does give it a little bit of a lift right there? I mean, it just... I do, I notice it. I don't know if you guys can notice, but it does give it just that little bit of something right there under the brow. Okay, moving on to eyes. All right, so I already had the primer potion on. Then what I like to do is I like to take a powder and I like to go over my entire eye space with the powder to actually make sure that uh, primer is set. Otherwise, what happens is if I go directly in with a shadow, the shadow I find kind of skips across my lids because the, the primer is so sticky. And I have crepey lids. I mean, my lids are pretty dang crepey here. So it just it makes the shadow skip even worse. So I always want to make sure, did you guys hear that? I always want to make sure that I set my primer potion, even though it's been on my eyes for a little while. I just want to make sure I set that primer. And the powder that I'm using to do that is from Marc Jacobs. It's called the Perfection Powder. It's in the color 300 Beige. I love these, um, I love the packaging that Marc Jacobs products come in. I just love this. And that is a lot of powder. Do you guys see that? I mean, seriously, a lot of powder here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a fluffy eyeshadow brush in it and just all over the uh, lower lid and the upper lid just to set everything in place here. And I really believe that this step, I mean, it just helps so, so much. It really does. All right, the eyeshadows I'm going in with today, they're from Clinique, and this is the Pink Chocolate Palette. This is one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes for like an everyday, easy look. Um, the thing about what I have noticed with all the Clinique shadows that I have ever used is they are always more on the natural side. They're not the most pigmented shadow you're going to use. So you can get some dramatic looks out of Clinique shadows, that's for sure, but they are not the most pigmented. They do have to be built up. But if you're going for an everyday natural look like I'm doing today, then, I mean, these are like perfect, perfect palettes for that. And the pink chocolate one is one of my all-time favorites. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a fluffy brush. Where are my fluffy brushes here? Just actually cleaning off one of my brushes here. Have you guys ever heard of that um, Vera Mona uh, color switch where you can like, it's a tin and it's got like a rough, it almost feels like a hair donut and you just run your brush over it and it um, cleans your brush off, it cleans the color off so you can actually add more color or use a different color on your eyes or on that same brush. I made one myself out of a hair donut which works great but then I found these, mine's dirty so don't laugh, I found these at Walmart and I have two of them. I have this gray one and then I have a pink one also. And this is a little mat that I keep down right in front of me, and it catches not only my makeup fallout, and it keeps it from getting all over my table, but it is also made to use as one of those color switches. So you just take your brush, and you rub your brush in on that, and it removes all of the previous color from your brush, so you can dip it into another color. So this is wonderful. I picked this up at Walmart. It's called the Makeup Mat. And I picked this up at Walmart. It was just a couple of dollars, and I love it. I absolutely love it, and I just keep it on my table at all times, and it just sits right in front of me. 
All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with kind of a, I'm going to do a crease color first or maybe a transition shade, if you will. So I'm going to go in with the second color right here, which is um, kind of a lighter brown type shade, a light brown shade. And I'm just going to take it on my fluffy brush and I'm going to put it just right on the corner edge of my fluffy brush here. And then right into the crease with it. Just trying to go for a little bit of definition here, not much. One of the things I have learned also over the years is I used to, when I put my shadows on, I used to, you know, shut my eye and, and you know, do like this. But one of the things that I have learned as I've gotten a little older and my lids have become just a little droopy <laughs> is I leave my eye open when I apply my transition shades or my crease colors because then I can actually see that I'm applying the crease color just a little tiny bit above the crease which makes my eye seem not so hooded. It actually takes this upper part of my lid right here and gives it a little bit of a shadow and definition which I feel just kind of pushes it back just a little bit which it's very helpful when you start getting to be my age and you start noticing those lids just drooping just a hair. Okay, okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this really light shade, this guy right here, and it is kind of a, it's a matte white with kind of a pink tint to it, and I'm going to put it just right on the tail end of my brow here. Oop, I have a hair sticking up. Right on the tail end of my brow here as my brow bone highlight. Yes, I have the Benefit High Brow up there, but I'm just going to reinforce that a little bit with this kind of whitish pink kind of shade here. I'm not bringing this far down onto that upper lid. I'm keeping it as close to the brow as I possibly can. I'm also going to take that same color and I'm going to put that in my inner corner here just to brighten up that inner corner just a little bit. And this is not going to be a pow in your face brightening. It is going to be very subtle because the shadow itself is actually really pretty subtle. I'm going to bring it onto the lid just a hair too. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, where is it at? Here it is. This is my Sonia Kashuk Small Shadow Brush here. I love this little guy because he's kind of um, fluffy but flat at the same time and it works perfectly in the crease. So I'm going to take this darker brown, this guy right there, and I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of the brush and I'm going to put that directly into the crease. So here I am actually finding the actual crease, not really above it, but just right in that socket. And I'm putting that there for just a little bit of a shadow. Not much, but a little. Okay, I'm also going to take a little bit and just put it in this outer V a little also. So a little bit more on the brush. And the way that I'm doing this is I am going to lift my lid just a little bit and I'm going to stamp it right here on the outer V and just come in just a little bit onto the lid. Not much, just a little bit. I don't want this to come way out because then it's going to make my eye look even more droopy. So I'm going just a little bit here on the outer portion of the lid and the outer V. So when I stamp it, I'm going straight up into that crease. I'm not bringing it out at all. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and flip the brush over because that's where I had most of the color. And I'm going to run that into the crease and blend it. Alright, so now I'm going to take the brush that I used for the white shade. I'm going to clean it off. Which, by the way, this is the, um, what is this called? This is called the Smashbox Eye Shaping Brush. <laughs> which I do love this brush for that, you know, small detail work or right under the brow bone. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to go right into this kind of pink shade here 
and it is a little shimmery. It's not crazy shimmery, but it is a little shimmery, and I have put, you know, quite a big dent in that one, but this one's going to go all over the lid, so I'm going to pack it pretty good onto that brush, and just right onto the lid with this guy. And again, I want to make sure that I have it blended in. It's amazing how long it can actually take to do an eyeshadow look that is really very minimal. <laughs> you want it to look right, you know what I mean? All right, so the liner I'm using today is from Urban Decay. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide, uh, Glide On Eye Pencil in Alkaline. And this is one of the ones that came out with the Naked Heat Collection. And I really do like this liner. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use a liner on my upper lid, but I am going to tight line with it. Um, I do need a mirror kind of close to me to do this. One second. And tight lining, if you're not familiar with, is just taking that liner. It's kind of in the waterline, but it's like right underneath the lash line, like you're filling in the empty spaces between the lashes under there. Now this eyeliner does not interfere with my contacts. I don't know if you guys have seen the video I posted a couple of years ago. It was almost two years ago, I guess, I posted it. Um, I'll leave a link for it down below, but it's called What Contact Lens Wear Should Know About Eyeliners. And I did this whole video about what eyeliners I can and cannot wear because some eyeliners will leave a funky buildup or cloud on my contact and it doesn't happen like immediately but if I wear the eyeliner within a couple of hours I'll start getting this funky film over my contacts and it, it completely blinds me. I mean I seriously cannot see when that happens and one of the eyeliners that I could not wear was an Urban Decay 24-7 liner but it was the one in Perversion. I had a very very hard time wearing that one because it would put that funky film but the regular 24-7 Glide-On pencils don't do that. It seemed to be only, by the way, I'm putting this in my lower waterline, it seemed to be only the um, Perversion one that did that. I don't know if it was made different. I, I'm, I'm not sure. But for some reason, boy, that one sure got me. And time for lashes. So I've got my, where's it at? have my Tweezerman Lash Curler, which I love this guy, and let's curl these puppies. I don't necessarily curl my lashes every day. I mean, I just normally, I don't really feel the need to, because I mean, my lashes are not stick straight anyway. My lashes do curl on their own pretty well. So I don't normally, you know, have to do this. But on occasion when I want my eyes to look a little more open, I might do it. And the mascara I'm going in with today is my Benefit Roller Lash, which is and has been one of my favorites for quite some time. And I'm not going to go real heavy with the mascara today because, again, just I want a very easy look. Moving on to finish up the face. The eyes are done. And for the face, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with some highlight and I'm going to use my MAC Soft and Gentle here. This is for me a very good daytime highlight because it's natural but it's not so natural that you can't see it if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to take it right here along the tops of the cheekbones and I pretty much do my highlighter before my blush on days when I want to be a little more natural um, because I think it makes it look a little more natural. And when you have, when you're about my age and your pores really start showing, 
you don't want to use too much highlighter up there anyway. So what I do is I really blend it. So I'll take it and I'll just really blend it in right here. I don't just leave it setting on the tops of the cheek cheekbones. I blend it in because it does make it a bit more natural when you do that. Okay, and I keep it away from the very corner of my eye because it will accentuate some lines. Okay, let's go down just the bridge of the nose but not to the tip because I want just this part and then right at the cupid's bow. For blush, I am using my Bare Minerals Ready Blush, and this is in the color the Aphrodisiac. This has been one of my favorites for years, but I have not used it for a little while, so it's just been kind of sitting off in my um, stash, waiting for me to use it. And it almost reminds me of the NARS Orgasm, but not quite as shimmery. It does have gold reflect in it, but not as shimmery as the uh, Orgasm one. Not the new Orgasm one. I don't know if you guys have ever used it. The new one, it's been formulate, reformulated. So it seems to be a little more pink than peach nowadays. I don't know. I don't know why they did that because the original peachy one was just gorgeous and that's what this one reminds me of. It reminds me of one of the original it reminds me of the original um, orgasm formula, just not quite as much of a gold reflect as, as the orgasm. All right, next for lips, I am going in with my Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy liquid lipstick, and this is in the color Extreme Nude. As far as liquid lipsticks go, these and the uh, Bare Minerals Gen Nudes are my favorite because they don't completely dry down. They do look matte on the lips. They do not accentuate lines, but they do not completely dry down, so they're not transfer proof. And they're very comfortable. I love it, love it, love it. Alright guys, this is my finished look for Saturday morning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Also guys, you can look me up on my social media, Facebook, in Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, Tumblr. It's all under Rock Fabulous 40s. Also guys, if you want to be notified of videos I have posted, go ahead and hit the bell down there as well. And also down there somewhere is a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe and you too can rock your fabulous 40s. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.